Hey everyone, it's Saoirse, and welcome to Cozy Tea and Poetry Time. I hope that the sound is alright. I have some rain sounds on. It might sound more like white noise to you. But I have my tea here, so please feel welcome to grab a cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever you like. And make sure it's not too hot. Mine is very hot. I also have my poetry with me. So, um, as you might know, I'm trying to read 52 books this year. I try to do that every now and then. And this past month I read a really long book and it took me the whole month and so I didn't, um, I wasn't going to hit my four book goal. So I reread uh, Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur and so, ah, The Sun and Her Flowers, her second poetry book. Um, I did Homebody a little while ago, you might remember. But yeah, I just reread her first two and it was really nice. It, you know, you can read them in an hour, take, take an evening and light a candle. I have a candle. And just dive in because it's so comforting. There, I find I found myself putting my little tabs on a lot of pages, a lot of pages. So I'm just going to read you some of the ones that I liked, um, not all of them, just some that resonated with me. And let me know your thoughts on poetry, do you find it relaxing? Are there certain poets that you turn to um, when you're in a mood? What mood do you have to be in for which poet? I mean, they're, they're all so different. Um, but if you've read Rupi Kaur, you know her style. It's very short. Um, it's very easy to read, it's not rhymy poetry, a lot of people don't like that. I love all kinds of poetry, but it's very much free verse. So let's get into it. Every time you tell your daughter, you yell at her out of love. You teach her to confuse anger with kindness, which seems like a good idea till she grows up to trust men who hurt her, because they look so much like you. And that's to fathers with daughters. She also does all of her own illustrations, which are very nice. You pinned my legs to the ground with your feet and demanded I stand up. A lot of these poems will surely remind you of people and times in your life, and some of them are not pleasant. Maybe things we'd like to forget, but that's the great thing about poetry, that we can use it as a very cathartic experience, both to write it and to read it. Um, oh, and I should say, this is also a signed copy. I did not meet her, I wish I could, but um, this was one of those Barnes & Noble signed copies. Trying to convince myself I am allowed to take up space is like writing with my left hand when I was born to use my right. That's called the idea of shrinking is hereditary. You tell me to quiet down because my opinions make me less beautiful, but I was not made with a fire in my belly so I could be put out. I was not made with a lightness on my tongue so I could be easy to swallow. I was made heavy, half blade and half silk, difficult to forget and not easy for the mind to follow. You should follow Rupi on Instagram. Um, I really love following her. She does some really cool live videos where it's like a writing workshop. Um, I've done a couple of those where she gives you prompts, things to write about, and gives you some time. She chats throughout it. It's just, it's really nice. And she's such a, she's, she's sold so many books at this point. She's so wildly successful and her story, if you read more about her, is just fascinating. 
she's just one of those people that really emanates light and healing. Um, and she actually splits this book into four parts, the hurting, the loving, the breaking, and the healing. Um, and her other books have a similar structure. When my mother opens her mouth to have a conversation at dinner, my father shoves the word hush between her lips and tells her to never speak with her mouth full. This is how the women in my family learned to live with their mouths closed. There's a lot of very poignant um, observations about family and um, about her particular family being immigrants from India and the relationship that she has with her father. It's very brave. It's very brave of her to write everything that she does and to write about um, a lot of romantic relationships that she's had. No, it won't be love at first sight when we meet. It'll be love at first remembrance, because I've seen you in my mother's eyes when she tells me to marry the type of man I'd want to raise my son to be like. I just love the way that her books are laid out. They're so beautiful. I do not want to have you to fill the empty parts of me. I want to be full on my own. I want to be so complete I could light a whole city and then I want to have you because the two of us combined could set it on fire. I'll show you that one. Time for a tea break. It's so hot. I made it and immediately sat down with it. It's mint tea, if you'd like to know, and this is my little chip cup. Isn't he cute? Focus. It's hard to want hot tea when you live in Florida at this time of year. It's starting to get very, very uncomfortably warm here. I did this last time when I was reading the book I scared myself too because I thought this was a bug that came out of the book but it's just like it's a little flower that I pressed I very often put flowers in my books and and forget about it and find them later and usually it's not scary and usually it doesn't look like a bug but sometimes it does you might not have been my first love, but you were the love that made all the other loves irrelevant. How do you turn a forest fire like me, so soft I turn into running water? I need someone who knows struggle as well as I do. Someone willing to hold my feet in their lap on days it is too difficult to stand. The type of person who gives exactly what I need before I even know I need it. The type of lover who hears me even when I do not speak is the type of understanding I demand. That's called the type of lover I need. It's such a journey, moving through her books. Um, and some of the poems are more like, they're like prose poems, kind of longer paragraphs. You said, if it is meant to be, fate will bring us back together. For a second, I wonder if you are really that naive, if you really believe fate works like that, as if it lives in the sky staring down at us as if it has five fingers and spends its time playing us like pieces of chess, as if it is not the choices we make. Who taught you that? Tell me. Who convinced you? You've been given a heart and a mind that isn't yours to use, that your actions do not define what will become of you. I want to scream and shout, it's us, you fool, we're the only ones that can bring us back together. 
but instead I sit quietly, smiling softly through quivering lips, thinking, isn't it such a tragic thing when you can see it so clearly but the other person doesn't? How many relationships have we tried to stay in where they're clearly wrong and not good for us? But we try and try to communicate and it's like talking to a brick wall. When people say, uh, we'll be together if, if that's what fate decides and you just want to tell them, we have to decide it. It must hurt to know I am your most beautiful regret. I love the, the breakup poetry. And look, look how short these poems are. I just love the way they look on the page. I didn't leave because I stopped loving you. I left because the longer I stayed, the less I loved myself. I've definitely been there. Um, these fit really close to home. I don't remember how I felt when I first read this one. Um, but I know when I read Homebody, I was, I was definitely crying. Did you think I was a city big enough for a weekend getaway? I am the town surrounding it, the one you've never heard of, but always pass through. There are no neon lights here, no skyscrapers or statues, but there is thunder, for I make bridges tremble. I am not street meat, I am homemade jam, thick enough to cut the sweetest thing your lips will touch. I am not police sirens, I am the crackle of a fireplace. I'd burn you, and you still couldn't take your eyes off me, because I'd look so beautiful doing it. You'd blush. I am not a hotel room. I am home. I am not the whiskey you want. I am the water you need. Don't come here with expectations and try to make a vacation out of me. I love that one. had to leave. I was tired of allowing you to make me feel anything less than whole. I hope this is relaxing. I love a good page turning, rainy, soft spoken ASMR video. Um, I just don't have the proper microphone to do ASMR. Unfortunately, I use the microphone that is on my camera. You might not even be able to hear me right now. I won't know until I watch this video. I am losing parts of you like I lose eyelashes, unknowingly and everywhere. I love that interpretation of a relationship ending. The way that we forget someone we think in the moment when they leave that we will never forget them, that we'll always remember the, the vividness of the tiny moments with them. But just as she says, like eyelashes, unknowingly and everywhere, we lose these people. And it's usually for the best. What I miss most is how you loved me, but what I didn't know was how you loved me had so much to do with the person I was. It was a reflection of everything I gave to you, coming back to me. How did I not see that? How? How did I sit here soaking in the idea that no one else would love me that way? When it was I that taught you. When it was I that showed you how to fill the way I needed to be filled. How cruel I was to myself, giving you credit for my warmth, simply because you had felt it. Thinking it was you who gave me strength, wit, beauty simply because you recognized it, as if I was not already these things before I met you, as if I did not remain all these once you left. That's such an important lesson, isn't it? We have everything that we are and that we need inside of us, but we allow other people to make us feel that we were not ourselves, that we were not our full selves until we met them, and it's just not true.
perhaps the saddest of all are those who live waiting for someone they're not sure exists. And that's called seven billion people. I think a lot of us have spent a lot of time in our lives doing exactly that. Telling ourselves we can't move on to a new stage of our life because we're waiting for someone that we, we don't even know. We don't know yet. We don't know if they're real. I used to tell myself that I, I couldn't settle where I wanted to settle until I found someone to settle there with me or that I would have to move to where I want to be and meet someone there and if I didn't then it was a failure. We base so much of our lives and our self-worth around acceptance from romantic partners. You tell me I am not like most girls and learn to kiss me with your eyes closed. Something about the phrase, something about how I have to be unlike the women I call sisters in order to be wanted, makes me want to spit your tongue out. Like I am supposed to be proud, you picked me. As if I should be relieved, you think I am better than them. It's terrible when people say that, isn't it? You're not like the other girls. It's not something to say to someone. It's just not nice. Apparently, it is ungraceful of me to mention my period in public, because the actual biology of my body is too real. It is okay to sell what's between a woman's legs more than it is okay to mention its inner workings. The recreational use of this body is seen as beautiful while its nature is seen as ugly. How true is that? It is absolutely infuriating. I love that she brings these things up in her poetry. Ooh, that rain is getting really loud, isn't it? My goodness. Well, I might just end it there. Or do I have another one? I'm just, I have no notes for this video. I'm just kind of going through. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. But I'll read you... I'll read you the little bit about the author here. When she was five, her mother handed her a paintbrush and said, draw your heart out. Rupi Kaur views her life as an explanation, exploration of that artistic journey. Through her poetry and illustrations, she engages with love, loss, trauma, healing, and femininity. For Rupi, writing has always been a collective experience. At the age of 17, she began sharing her work. The stage was her first love, and spoken word is where she found her voice. Rupi pursued her love for language by studying rhetoric at the University of Waterloo. She began working on her first collection, Milk and Honey, which eventually became a New York Times bestseller. Rupi's passion is expression. For her, that expression is taking many forms. Her photography and art direction are brought to various spaces around the world, and her poetry and prose are breaking international boundaries. Well, it's been a lovely tea and poetry time, cozy tea and poetry. I hope to do more of these videos. It's hard to know what what everybody likes because obviously my videos are already kind of different in that I don't edit them. Eventually I might. Um, but they're pretty lo-fi. I don't even know what that means. What is lo-fi? Low, low production value. Um, I have a camera and a ring light. But yeah, I want to do different styles of videos. You know I never come across shouty and overexcited and in your face. I don't like that style of presentation. But I don't do a lot of um, soft-spoken, very chill videos. I think I've done one 
which was a, a poetry video and I can link that for you. But I'd like to do sort of a series of cozy tea and poetry time. And maybe I'll be more cozy next time with my cozy chair and a jumper or something. It's just so very hot here and I have to have the fan on and the air conditioning on and I'm afraid that it's just ruining the sound. Um, but it is the way it is in Florida. It will be like this until probably late November. <sighs> Hoping to get away a couple times during the summer. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and drinking tea and reading poetry with me today. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this. And happy reading, everyone.